Blessed be the God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth in the living hope of resurrection. God has given us an inheritance that is imperishable and unfading. For although we have not seen Jesus, we love him. And although we have not seen him, we believe in him. For the outcome of our faith is the salvation of our souls. Let us come this morning to believe and to give thanks. day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. We continue to remember each other in our daily prayers as well as all of God's creation. As we continue to maneuver during this time, we know that God walks with us, that the love of Christ is shown to all of the world, and that the Holy Spirit sent for us is guiding us along our way. We now go to God in prayer together, remembering those on our hearts those on the hearts of others, and those who go unspoken of each and every day. Let us pray. Most holy God, you have given us the testimony of Scripture so that we, who cannot see the risen Christ, may believe through hearing. Open our hearts and minds to its message, that moved by its power, we may also become witnesses to the truth that Jesus lives in our world and walks among us today. Merciful God, we confess with regret our reluctance to believe in your miracles, even the ones we can see in our present. And we admit how much more difficult it is to believe what we have heard and read about your mysterious and wondrous workings in the past, including the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Forgive us and give us the measure of faith of the early disciples. 
Teach us to trust our hearts as well as our eyes and our spirits as well as our hands. Above all, strengthen our faith in the awesome and inspiring resurrection of Jesus Christ, God of purpose. We continue to look for your signs that hope and your objective for us in this world will soon be realized. In Jesus of Nazareth, you fulfilled the promise to David not with earthly pomp, but with heavenly power over death through resurrection. No throne can ever bring us gladness, but the presence of the living Christ through the Spirit brings us the joy and hope of eternal life. We are filled with thanksgiving and the confidence that you do not abandon us, nor do you ignore us, but always you lead us towards the path of love creator of all light. We understand that every perfect gift comes to us through you. As children of your light, we pray for all of those who are in darkness. We pray for the church and all your people in this land as well as all lands across the globe. Cleanse us from faction and hostility and incline your children to purity, temperance, and faith in your word. Deliver us from a haughty spirit and allow us to leave behind contempt for other races and nations and help us to spread the light of love and freedom to all humanity. Comforting God, cure disease, bind up broken hearts, mend broken bones, calm frazzled nerves, speak peace to your people. As you have glorified Christ in resurrection, you have given us eyes to see his glory, to understand his words, and to feel his undying love towards the world. In like faith, we put our trust in you, that one day you will show us salvation and eternal life as you have promised. We pray all of this in the name of the one who reminds us of our mission in this world, And the one who taught us to pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow They fail not as thou hast.
for sin and a peace that endureth thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings to May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of these words today. Last week, as we all know, was Easter Sunday. And it was unlike any Easter Sunday that I think we have celebrated before. We were not sitting together with each other, celebrating the resurrection of Christ with one another. But we were able to celebrate. We were able to welcome the risen Christ back into this world. Just not the way that we had planned about a month ago. But that doesn't change Easter. It doesn't change the Easter message. In fact, it might bring that message home a little better for us. There is no great obstacle, the message tells us, no great a suffering that God's compassion will not be with us always. This is what the resurrection of Christ has taught us. Keep faith. Keep believing in the love of God, the teachings of Christ, and in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And this brings us to our scripture this morning. What we have on this Sunday is the continuing knowledge that Jesus is with us in this world. Last week, Jesus was resurrected, raised from the dead, which is wonderful and full of greatness. And he's done it again. We are reminded once more on Easter Sunday of Christ's presence with us in this world. But... That is not the end of the story because now Jesus is in the world with us. Here in the present kingdom of God, he is a part of who we are and what we are doing now. The acts of Jesus did not stop at the resurrection. They continued to go on. And how do we know this? because we were told of this through the Gospels, through the writings to let us know about the life of Jesus and about the acts of Jesus, pre-resurrection and post-resurrection. For the end of the text of John this morning said, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is what our faith is. Believing. Believing in Jesus Christ. Believing in what we have been told about this man who came to serve us, to love us, and to 
die for us. But the problem is, believing is sometimes the reason it is hard for us to believe. For faith is a mystery that the brain wants to solve. As human beings, we all want everything to be laid out in front of us, perfect, nice, to explain it from A to Z. But as human beings, we know that it rarely happens. We want evidence, all evidence, to prove that what we think is true is actually true. We want something that will give credence to what we are saying. We want to be proven right each and every time. We read that through believing we will have life in the name of Jesus Christ. But how do we know? There are times when we doubt, when we hold doubt in our mind, but we have these stories. We have the written evidence of the Gospels and the stories in the Bible, but most importantly, we have our faith and we have the belief in that which we do believe. So what is it that our story tells us today? In our gospel reading today, we found the disciples locked inside a room, scared about what is coming next. Sounds a little familiar. They were huddled together. Now, that is not so familiar for us right now. But the wondering and the asking of questions sure does sound familiar, as well as the waiting for the worst to come, for the next shoe to drop. But it was in that locked room with them by themselves that Jesus came and said to them, peace be with you. Jesus appeared in that locked room where the disciples were scared and he brought them peace. When the disciples were afraid of death, afraid of what might come next, Jesus was there for them, was there to give them peace peace, the peace of Christ. There is no place the disciples could have hidden, and there is no place that we can hide. The grace of God and the love shown to us through Christ is always with us, especially when we are scared and we are worried. A locked door could not keep Jesus Christ out. What is it that we can do to keep Jesus Christ out of our lives? Nothing. There is nothing that anyone can do to keep Jesus Christ out of their lives. There is no action that anyone can commit that will keep Jesus Christ out of their lives. Jesus is always with us, showing us the love of God that shines through the life of Christ. As we continue on in our gospel reading this morning, we read about Thomas whom later on has been given the name Doubting Thomas. But that's not really fair. Because I asked, is Thomas the only one who doubts? We know the story. Thomas was told by the other disciples that Jesus had come and visited them. And Thomas said to the disciples, unless I see the mark of nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. But this was not the first time that someone didn't believe what they were being told. When Mary Magdalene went and saw the empty tomb where Christ was supposed to be buried, she did not believe until Christ came to her and spoke with her. The disciples didn't believe when Mary ran to them to tell them that she had seen Jesus. Even in this locked room we read about today, the disciples needed to see the hands and the side of Jesus before they believed. For it is written in John chapter 20, verse 20, after he said this, peace be with you. He showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. 
Only after Jesus showed his hands and his side did the disciples rejoice. Yet here we are, giving Thomas a hard time for doing the exact same things that the disciples did upon seeing Jesus, for not truly believing until they were shown. The disciples needed proof, and so did Thomas. So a week later, once again, the disciples were together in this house, and Jesus appeared to them. Once again, nothing could keep Christ out of their lives. And with Christ came his peace. For as he entered the room, he spoke, peace be with you. Jesus looked at Thomas and said to him, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Then Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus was not offended by Thomas. Jesus didn't even seem to care that Thomas needed something to show Thomas the love of God and the peace of Christ here on this earth with them again. Now, we don't know if anyone told Jesus that Thomas was having doubts. We don't have that written for us. What we do know is Jesus showed up in the room and offered up what it was that Thomas needed at that time and that place. And the other interesting thing is that we see nowhere that Thomas felt his hands or put his hand inside of Jesus' side. For it just says that after Jesus appeared to him and spoke, Thomas then exclaimed, my Lord and my God. Perhaps it was enough for Thomas to know that Jesus cared for him so much. To know that Jesus was not upset about Thomas needing something. Perhaps it was enough that Jesus was willing to give Thomas exactly what he needed. Perhaps it was enough just to know that Jesus was not upset because Thomas doubted. Perhaps it was just enough to know that Jesus was in the world again. No matter what it was, what we do know is that Jesus blessed Thomas. After his resurrection, Jesus approached Mary, the disciples, and Thomas, each in a different way, each in a way that they themselves personally needed. We are all different in this world, and that is taken into account when Jesus comes to us. Some people might need the peace of Christ one way, while others need it another there might even be one person who has a need that no one else in this world has. But Jesus knows what the needs are. And Jesus will give peace to each of us in exactly the way we need it. Jesus has the power to give us what we need, when we need, and where we need it, even if we might doubt. This is a wonderful message for us on this Sunday. On this Sunday after Easter, for this is a message of faith and a message of blessing and a message of believing. For we do not personally have a face-to-face -face relationship with Jesus. We have not seen his hands. We have not felt his side. Yet, we do have faith. We have a genuine faith in the peace of Christ. And with this faith, there will come doubts. There will come some suffering. But most importantly, there comes great joy. Jesus had faith, and Jesus suffered on the cross. The disciples had faith, and they suffered on different occasions while traveling to preach the good news of Christ in the world. Do we need proof today? 
proof that shows us Jesus Christ is in this world showing God's love to us and through us. And so if you need proof, I ask you just to look at all the stories that we have heard around about the past month. We have doctors, nurses, and other medical professions who are putting their lives on the line for the lives of others. We have people who are organizing food dis- distributions for those who are without food at this time. There are people who are reaching out to others, letting them know that they are not alone, that someone in this world still cares for them and is still there for them. This is everything that the Gospels and the Scriptures have told us about Christ. This is everything that the Gospels and the Scriptures have told us about Christ's mission in this world. This is everything that the Gospels and the Scriptures have told us about ourselves, which are being sent out into the world by Christ, what we should be doing. How can anyone say, that they do not believe in the love of God through Christ right now? How can anyone say that Christ is not in the world with us right now? For God's love through Christ spreads all over this world right now. As Jesus appeared to the disciples when they all felt lost, so too must we appear and keep appearing to those who have needs, who feel lost, and who have doubts in this world. For if we give them hope, we find our joy. And through that joy, we reaffirm our faith. And through our faith, we strengthen our belief in the Christ who gives us what we need when we need it. We reaffirm our belief that Christ is in the world today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed and he walks among us. We believe it. We have faith in it. We know it and so we must continue to go out And show Christ's love, to shine Christ's light now and forever to all the world. Please join me in prayer. Ever present God, you have given us peace and hope in the form of Jesus Christ. Be with us and allow us to know that even if we doubt, you are there giving us the strength to show others the love and hope that you have given to us. Christ is our blessing and our example to bless others. Amen.
as we prepare to give our gifts and to receive the bread and the cup, we do so knowing that as Christ has risen and walks with us, we are called to follow his lead and to love all the world. This Easter is a bit different. We are not gathered in the sanctuary together, surrounded by each other and flowers. There are no trays that will be passed around, but we are not alone and we are not without. Christ has come from the grave to be with us, to comfort us, to guide us, to show us what it means to live God's love in this world. We have not stopped following the call of Christ on the church. And I hope that you have not stopped following the call of Christ on your life. There are many opportunities for you to help God's children here and around the world. And I encourage you to continue to do so. With Christ returning to this world, bringing with him all the gifts that God has to offer, it is now our time to offer what we can to give back to God and to creation. God has given us life in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In gratitude, let us offer our hearts and the fruits of our labor to God's service. And before we gather together around the table, a table that reminds us of what Jesus taught his disciples on that fateful night, he taught that we are not here to be served, but to serve others. That we are not here to partake only for ourselves, but to make sure that all can partake. If you would like to get yourself something to use for communion, this is a good spot to pause the video and go get what you need. It's okay if you do not have the grape juice and the little crackers that we use on a Sunday morning. What is important is the act of communion. What is important is that we remember the meaning of communion. We do this act together as one people in Christ. And we do this to remember that Jesus did this for us. The sacrifice that he made for us. And we remember why it was made. For the love of all the world. No matter where communion is taken or with what or when it is taken, as long as we remember the love that this meal represents and the gifts given to us, this meal will always have a special meaning in our lives. As Christ has risen, let us rise and invite all the world to come to the table to join us as one body in Christ, as we remember the meal that Christ gave to the world. We come to this table every week to remember the night before Christ's crucifixion, when he gathered his disciples together for one last time of fellowship and to prepare them for all that was to come. Today we gather around this table in the full light of resurrection, we live into that resurrection when we remember the words of Christ and participate in this communion feast. On that night, he took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup, blessed it, and poured it out saying this is the cup of new life for all people everywhere. Drink freely from it in remembrance of me. Likewise now as we gather around this table using whatever we have on hand to do so, we live into this communion tradition and participate in the fellowship of believers worldwide. Please join me now in prayer. God of hope, renewal, and redemption. We thank you for this time of fellowship and communion. We thank you for Jesus the Christ. We thank you for the celebration of his life and of his resurrection. We thank you for bonds as believers we share with all who call after you, each in their own voice, and with whom we share in this feast. 
Please let it be spiritual nourishment as we do your good work in the world around us. Amen. join me for the benediction. Receive the good news. Christ is risen from the dead. Tell the good news. The power of death shall no longer oppress us. Live the good news. We are free to love all just as God and Christ have loved us. Go now in the knowledge that Christ is in the world bringing God's love to all creation. Let us be that love. Amen.